Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Ken Levine, singer, vocal coach on YouTube. Today, we are continuing our Merry Month of Metal. This time, we're delving into something new, different. It was a suggestion by one of our longtime subscribers. I don't know. Sade, are you a subscriber? Well, whatever. Your suggestion intrigued me. This is uh, what she writes. I have not seen a reaction to this, but my favorite vocal live performance of all time... Nope, live performance ever, not of all time. Igor, Tu Petit Moano, live at Dur 2014. Think Nena or Nina, but modern. And where the album version is harrowing, this is powerful. I guess referring to the live version of Tu Petit Moano, uh, not Nena. I'm not who, sure who Nena is, but I'll have to look further into that. The singer is classically trained, Laura... Le Prunarek, I'm sure I butchered your name, sorry Laura, and the musical style is often called Baroque Core. So, metal, maybe? Let's find out. I've got the song queued up here. I tried to find one with some captions because I understand that Igor is a French digital music uh, guy band. I'm not sure, uh, I guess a band. And uh, this one, uh, I guess is in French, but I couldn't find any translations either. So I'll just have a listen and see where it takes us. Immediately struck, classical singers, especially operatically trained classical voices, have a really difficult time sounding good with a microphone jammed up <laughs> right next to their, their lips. It's, it's a, a trade-off between uh, you, the tone quality plus the, the carrying power that the operatically trained voice is intended to capture, uh, to be able to project your voice over a 50-piece orchestra, essentially, um, you have to imagine that the person's eardrum is, you know, 50 feet away from you, and you're really um, projecting that kind of power behind your voice. But when you're singing directly into the microphone, I always imagine that this is someone's eardrum. So you don't ever want to be any louder than lovely. So the trade-off is how much tone versus air, how do you capture the quality of the operatic tone without um, being too potent and powerful. It, it, it is a, a, a definite skill. It's sort of like a, a skill above and beyond just being able to sing operatically, which is, of course, uh, one that you train for years to be able to capture. And this sounds haunting and beautiful off the top. Wonderfully balanced. Oh! 
These beats are chaotic, and you have this almost like two time signatures. You have the the Baroque melody of the classical singer and the solo violin um, playing in sort of one temporal universe, and then you have this uh, chaotic snare that is just going between both uh, like left and right channels, passing o between them, and then creating this sort of um, chaotic texture on top of it. It's, yeah, it, it's interesting. And uh, like, it's almost like it takes too much cognitive power to try and decipher what the hell is happening, <laughs> you know? Uh, and you have to just sort of let it wash over you. Fascinating. This is an outdoor festival somewhere. Everyone is shirtless. It must be very hot. Everyone's in this sort of frenzied state, except for this one girl where... Yeah, yeah, this, this gal right here. <laughs> Everyone is like thrashing and banging their heads and just, you know, into the, the beat. And she's just calmly allowing this, this sonic soundscape to wash over her. That's sort of observing the beauty in the chaos. Interesting. This is what you train your voice as an opera singer to do, to have these long, soaring, luscious lines of legato notes, you know, essentially surfing on top of whatever might be underneath you. You, you dream of being underneath or you know, having like a feather bed of Puccini or Verdi to lie on, but this is uh, satisfying in, a, in an a, such an interesting way. Now, I understand that this, to what was this, from 2014, so nearly 10 years ago, and uh, I think the album, I did a little, a little bit of research, I didn't want to go in totally cold. Uh, it was from 2012, maybe, was released. So whoever is at this festival obviously understands a little bit of what Igor is all about. But it's fascinating that, you know... <laughs> That opera would be melded in, or that classical vocal sound would be melded in this way, and then teasing out this sort of v violent side of, uh, you know, from going from the sublime to this this incredibly aggressive vocal tone. Incredible singing. People are into it.
looks as though she's just making this up on the spot. The ability to be able to uh, improvise on top of this chaos with your voice. And there was a lot of seamless moments where everything just seemed to coalesce magically and being alignment. I'm not sure if this is improvised or not, but someone knows, I don't know. Leave your comments down below. seems like we're left with the crowd cheering as we were at the very beginning of the song. Interesting, interesting to point me in the direction of Igor. Uh, I understand there's a whole catalog of Igor tunes, and I think they might be out on tour as well uh, in the coming months, so you can check them out live just to see I, I'm not sure if the original lineup is. This is again, this is from 10 years ago, so I, I don't know if the singers are still the same or not, or whether Igor is one musician or a whole band. Or Again, I need to go down the rabbit hole a little bit further. There's this um, incredible sort of deconstruction of musical genres and then reconfigura reconfiguration of like... Um, building blocks uh, coming together like like a lego like a bunch of different lego sets being mashed together to come up with something this sort of like frankenstein's sort of sound and it's not a monster it's it's beautiful within its all with it it's chaos and i think there's um we i think uh, we have to certainly give credit to the the composers of this baroque core style for sort of dreaming this up but Frankly, I the way I look at it, most musicians really don't know what they're doing half the time. In, in, when they're in that creative zone, they go down into that primordial sort of soup of creativity and come back up and they're like, I don't even know what this is. I don't know how I got it, but here it is. And they present it and just see where it lands. And um, sometimes we're very precious with our creations and, and don't want anyone to harm our little babies. But this one seems like it has its own legs and is robust enough to defend itself as it were so anyway these are just my musings please leave your musings down in the comment section let me know your thoughts did i miss something integral to this i was there a favorite moment that you just that shot through you in a unique way leave a timestamp down below of that moment in this song in this video so we can all relive it and enjoy it. And um, and also, too, uh, if you are just coming to this channel for the first time and experiencing this, why not consider joining this uh, fabulous community of music lovers and vocal aficionados and leave your mark by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the great stuff that we look at, review, comment on on this channel. If you I, are a young singer that are and you're wanting to explore the vocally operatic side of your voice, or maybe you don't even know what that would sound like, I strongly recommend you reach out to a talented vocal coach. There's lots of people to choose from. Learning one-on-one -on -one is the best way to do it. It's not always possible in today's day and age. You can certainly reach out to one of us here in YouTube land. You, if, you don't have to work with me, but if you'd like to, I'll be sure to leave those links down below in the description as well. And I think that about wraps it up. If you have made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few of those precious moments here with us, and we will see you next time.